In this lecture, we'll talk about decision making. Managers make different kinds of decisions. Decision making is important, is one of the most important of all management functions, and it's part of most functions at all levels, from the low online or from line management through middle management to senior management. The decisions might vary in terms of whether they're strategic, tactical, or operational, but still quite important. A systematic approach to decision making follows six steps, and they usually lead, these steps, if you follow them, usually lead to more effective decision making. First, you want to recognize and define the decision situation. This is sometimes called problematization, that is, figuring out what the problem is. It's kind of a weird word. I probably shouldn't have brought that up, but anyway. Um, number two is you develop the options to resolve the situation. That is, what are the possible ways that this situation, these issues, might ultimately lead to a, some sort of a conclusion or some sort of an action? Then you analyze each of the options in detail and select the best option. Once that's done, you have to implement the decision and, of course, monitor the consequences of the decision in the context of the problem that was identified that the decision was made to address. So if you think about it, you got these different steps, six different steps, where you first figure out what's going on. Second of all, you decide whether you need to make a decision. You look at the options. You figure out which option is best. Take the option, implement it, and then monitor the consequences. The first step in this decision-making process is recognizing and defining the situation. The situation may be bad, a negative, huge losses on a particular product, for example. Or it may be an opportunity, that is something good, something that's calling for a way that the business could either perform much better, a positive situation. Situations calling for small scale decisions often occur without warning. Situ a situation might just advance because of an event, an outage of some kind in, supply, in the supply chain. Situations requiring large scale decisions often, however, generally occur with some warning signs these sort of quiet or weak signals. That's one of the most important thing managers can do is have all these open lines of communication so you can identify when issues might develop that will require some sort of a decision. Effective managers sp spend much time trying to figure out and identify when these signals might occur. Once a situation has been recognized, the manager must define it. Losses reveal a problem, for example, or a failing product line. One manager might define a situation as a product quality problem, where another may define it as a change to the consumer preferences. These two viewpoints may lead to vastly different decisions, and so that's why it's important to figure out exactly what's going on and analyze your situation. Situation analysis, they might call it. Once the decision situation has been recognized and defined, the next step is to develop a list of options. What, might, what are some possible ways to move forward? This best, the best list includes both standard reactions and some creative plans, something different. As a general rule, more time and expertise is devoted to the developmental stage of decision making when the decision is of major importance, figuring out what your options are. When the decision is of less importance, less time and expertise would be spent at this stage trying to identify how best to move forward. Sometimes when time is of the essence and the situation is not that, the, the divergence in outcomes is not that great, making a decision quickly is more important than the accuracy. At other times, the actual details of the decision might be a really very important part of the, of the particular outcome. After developing a list of possible courses of action, management should analyze the practicality and appropriateness of each option. An option may be deemed impractical because of a lack of financial resources, legal restrictions, ethical or social responsibility considerations, authority constraints, they can't get it done because you don't have authority to do so, technology constraints, economic limitations, or simply lack of information and expertise. When assessing appropriateness, the decision maker should consider 
whether the retained proposed option adequately addresses the situation. Does it really solve the problem? When analyzing the consequences of an option, managers should consider its impact on the situation and the organization on, as a whole, not only in the short term, but also in the longer term. By the way, technology can really help managers maintain an agenda, analyze options, make decisions, gathers all the information, shares all the information. It can be a very, very effective tool during this process. When all of the courses of action have been analyzed, management must select the best one. Selection is often a subjective procedure because many situations don't lend themselves to, qualitative, to quantitative analysis where the answer is can be calculated. It's more of a trade-offs. Of course, it's not always necessary to select only one option and reject all others. It may be possible to select and use a combination of several options or try one option, hold a second one as a backup plan, those sorts of things. To deal with the situation at hand, the selected option or option must be put into action. Implementation can be fairly simple or it may be very complex, requiring many moving parts to be coordinated. Depending on the nature of the decision, these, the, uh, the outcomes may depend, reflect, maybe depend considerably on how well it's implemented as well as the decision itself. Additionally, decision makers should anticipate that there may be resistance to some aspects of the decision by people within the organization. People tend to resist change because they fear the unknown or they're not fully informed as to the, the, the reasons for and the need for the situation or the required outcomes and how they might influence them in the future. So there's some resistance. This is sometimes called policy resistance. Finally, management should be ready to deal with any unexpected consequences that may come up. Speaking more about consequences, after managers have implemented a decision, they must determine whether it has accomplished the desired result. Without proper monitoring, the consequences of a decision may not be known quickly enough to make the efficient changes that are necessary to resolve the situation in the way that the decision was intended. It may be too late if one does not monitor the consequences and make sure one reacts to changes in the outcomes. If the desired result is achieved, management can reasonably conclude that it made a good choice. If the desired result is not achieved, management may discover that the situation was either incorrectly defined from the beginning or that the decisions that were identified weren't appropriate or that the planning process or selection process was not a very good one. Corrective action in the decision-making process is then warranted. What may require, the whole situation may require starting a decision-making process all over again to figure out where we went wrong and what a better choice of action, choice of course of action might have been. Oftentimes, it's just as important for a manager to make a decision as it is for them to understand the factors that affect decision-making. The use of intuition is usually the result of years of experience in a specific situation or environment. Other situations that look similar, may be, you may be able to respond in a like way. Of course, there's risks associated with that if the details of the situation do indeed have difference, does, do indeed imply there are differences in the situation. But sometimes there's not enough time or the information is not available, in which case an experienced executive can make intuitive decisions that can be quite effective. The manager will recognize patterns and similarities between the current situation and previous ones and make use of what information is available and move forward in that way. Stress and emotion, however, can influence decisions negatively. Also, defensiveness sometimes can cause reactionary decisions or overreaction. And obsessions sometimes are indicators that stress and emotion are being factored into the decision-making process too much. You can sometimes see when there's an emotional reaction, you can watch an emotion in the decision maker and realize that perhaps there are some problems in the decision because they're too invested in some of their own sense of intuition rather than looking at the facts as they develop in a kind of a defensive posture leading to a reactionary decision, shooting from the hip, they call it sometimes. 
Now, how the problem and the situation is framed can also determine whether the final decision is a good one or a bad one. Managers need to ensure that they are seeing the situation objectively. Sometimes bad decisions are reinforced by escalation of commitment. That means the manager puts in a little bit of commitment and then because they've made an investment, they continue to be committed to that. When the manager is committed and yet continues to fail, there's a reason to look and try to bring bring some additional information to bear because that's an indicator it may be time to change course. When the failure, when more failure occurs, sometimes even stronger commitment happens because we want to be right. We want to prove we were right the first time even though the facts are saying that perhaps the earlier decision was wrong. Finally, confidence and risk, and the propensity uh, and risk tendency towards risk or willingness to accept risk can also be a delicate factor in the decision-making process. Some people are risk averse, even though the risky decision is the right one. And some people have a desire or an excitement about risk when risk is the wrong one and a much more conservative decision would have been better. Both of these attitudes, many of these these influences, the emotional side of leadership, the emo, excuse me, of decision making are important things to consider when you start, start to develop your own skills with respect to decision making and setting up the context so that you and your teams can make effective decisions. You must balance the factual nature with the timeliness of decision making, keeping in mind that human beings can be prone to error in their decision-making process, but at the same time, experienced people can make very effective decisions quickly if the decisions are aligned with their prior experience. Bunch of things to consider. In the last lecture coming up for this module, we'll talk about management in practice.